challenge is unchanged man machine and the moment a mixture of technology artistry and daring take the wheel of a high-powered machine press its performance past its design recognize then almost ignore the dangers fight win races then championships then meet the best from all forms of the craft matched in equal cars in the four-part series that is the international race of champions a pinnacle meeting of 12 of the best in racing like road racer Jeff Brabham from the IMSA Camel GT Series, a 39-year-old native Australian. A former Can-Am champion, Jeff last year became the first driver to capture four consecutive IMSA GT crowns. He races in his fourth IROC Series. 35-year-old Rusty Wallace represents the Winston Cup stock cars. He's from Concord, North Carolina. Rusty was the ASA champion in 1983. He moved on to the Winston Cup, where he was named Rookie of the Year. In 89, he was the series champion. Last year, in IROC 15, he scored an unprecedented three straight wins to capture his first IROC crown while racing at Watkins Glen, New York. IROC rookie Davy Jones represents road racing. He's from Lake Tahoe. At age 27, Davy earned his invitation with versatility. He started in go-karts at age five. Last year, he led the IMSA GT Series in wins, pole positions, and laps led. Allenser Jr. represents the Indy cars. 29-year-old Jr. makes a record seventh consecutive series start. Twice he has taken the champion's crown. Starting in sprint cars, where he sat on a phone book to reach the wheel, he followed his family legacy from Albuquerque all the way to the IndyCar Championship in 1990. Pete Halsmer is a 48-year-old road racer from Anaheim, California. This is his first IROC series. A Vietnam veteran, Pete is a longtime racer in Formula Ford, Super V, IndyCar, and IMSA GT competition. Last year, he captured his second IMSA GTO championship. 31-year-old Scott Pruitt from Roseville, California, is in his fifth IROC series. His first invitations came from two championships in IMSA GTO. In 87, he was the Trans Am champion. Now he races IndyCars. Last year, he won the IROC at Daytona. Stock car driver Dale Earnhardt from Mooresville, North Carolina. He's in his eighth series appearance. Dale took the Winston Cup rookie honors and the championship in consecutive years. Now, Dale Earnhardt has logged five Winston Cup crowns. Dale was the IROC champion in 1990. Floridian Hurley Haywood represents road racing in his third IROC series. A veteran sports car competitor, he has twice won at both Le Mans and Sebring. A former two-time GT champion, he is the IMSA Series reigning supercar champion. A record five times, he's won the 24 Hours of Daytona. Davey Allison of Hueytown, Alabama, is a stock car driver just like his father, Bobby. The elder Allison was an IROC champion. Davey is a rookie. Last year, he was third in the Winston Cup points. This year, he followed in his father's footsteps with a win in the Daytona 500. Stock car racer Harry Gant from Taylorsville, North Carolina, was the IROC champion back in 1985. Last year, he courted national affection by winning four straight Winston Cup races at age 51. But for Harry Gant, age is no factor as he starts in his third IROC series. 36-year-old Winston Cup racer Ricky Rudd is from Lake Norman, North Carolina. In 1977, he was Rookie of the Year. Now, he's an IROC rookie. A consistent winner, Ricky earned his invitation by finishing second to Earnhardt in last year's stock car chase. Ari Leyendijk is a native of Holland and represents the Indy cars. The 38-year-old is an IROC rookie. In 1990, he was on top of the world as the Indy 500 champion. Twelve of the best racing has to offer in equally prepared cars. It's the Dodge International Race of Champions. Daytona International Speedway, it's called the world's center of racing. From motorcycles to stock cars, many of the great racers of our day have earned their reputation right on these high banks. And today, it's the site of round number one of the 16th running of the International Race of Champions. Hello and welcome, I'm Paul Page. This is the series that attempts to remove the mechanical variable from motorsports. Take 12 of the world's finest drivers, let them go head to head with one another, relying on their racing skills alone. Now, to accomplish that, we run four different races on different tracks. And the cars themselves, the Dodge Daytona race cars, are as mechanically matched as man can make them. And even at that, both the race cars they'll drive and the positions they'll start from today are determined by a draw. 
Now, the purse is $670,000. It's substantial, but to the drivers, it's incidental to the title of champion. Now, Sam Posey, let's consider the list of former champions. Cale Yarborough, A.J. Foyt, Bobby Allison, Mark Donahue, just to name a few. It's an impressive list. Yes, it is, but as the series has matured, and as you said, this is IROC's 16th season, there's a new game emerging among the top drivers, which is to see if they can prove that they are IROC's all-time best drivers, and there are three contenders for that crown in the series this year. Al Unser Jr. has won the championship twice, and he's the series' all-time money winner. Dale Earnhardt, five-time Winston Cup champion, probably the best stock car racer in the business, and IROC really is essentially stock car racing. And Rusty Wallace, he's IROC's current prodigy, a man who won the championship last year by winning three consecutive races, which no one has ever managed to do before. Jack Root is in the pits, and Jack, Rusty Wallace has every chance of extending that win streak to four consecutive races today. Indeed he does, Sam. In fact, his chances are further enhanced by the fact that he's starting on the outside of the front row today. Now, two years ago, Rusty Wallace rewrote the IROC record book, becoming the first driver to ever start dead last in the field and score a victory, and it took place right here at Daytona International Speedway. Now, before the start of today's race, I asked Rusty if he was at all concerned about the fact that his NASCAR counterparts in this field were starting further back in the field. He said, no, not at all. He pointed directly behind him and said, I'm going to go with Al Unser Jr. to the front. And Bobby Unser, he says that together, they can go right to the lead. Well, Jack, having a helper, having a partner here is really important in the IROC race. We know that here at Daytona. They've made some big changes since last year. Improvements in the cars, all in the aerodynamics. The intent, of course, is to make the cars draft better. Run closer and the driver's a lot more equal. Now, the way that they did this was to take away a little downforce in the front and add a little bit in the rear to the spoiler, make it a little bit bigger. And they finished balancing the cars by using different springs and sway bars. And ever since, they've used the Dodge Daytonas here in IROC. The racing has been a lot more competitive. And with these changes, I'll bet you that it's going to be a whole lot better today. And Bobby Unser, let's not forget that the best race I think we've ever seen in the IROC happened on this track one year ago. Let's take a look at the field as they roll toward the green flag. There in that powder blue car is Rusty Wallace. He is in the front row. On the pole, though, is Jeff Brabham in the line green car, the road racer. Then in row number two, Davy Jones, a road racer in the orange car. And Al Unser Jr., the IndyCar racer, in a purple machine. In row three, Pete Halsmer from road racing in the men's car. And IndyCar racer Scott Pruitt, his machine is tan. The fourth row is Dale Earnhardt from NASCAR, the powder blue car, and Hurley Haywood, a road racer in the gold car. The fifth row, Davey Allison of NASCAR in an orange machine, and NASCAR's Harry Gant in the red car. And the sixth and final row in the white car is NASCAR's Ricky Rudd and Indy champion Ari Leondyke. So they're set up on turn number four here at Daytona and ready to run toward the green flag. The race is 100 miles, 40 laps, laps under the yellow in the IROC do not count. So very slowly now behind the pace car as it begins to pick up the speed just a bit. And we see it cycle down into the pits. The field is now under the control of road racer Jeff Brabham as he brings them to the flag and the green is out. The 16th running of the International Race of Champions is underway with Rusty Wallace with a little help from Al Unser Jr. pulls out in front. That's the difference in experience, Paul. You can see that little Al teams up with Rusty immediately leaving Jeff Brabham to fall back in back further. Jeff Brabham drops back to third. Dale Earnhardt comes up using the low groove, and he's got a couple of friends running with him down on the low side, including Ricky Rudd in that white car and Davey Allison in the center of the low run in the orange machine. Remember, Rusty Wallace leading now is bidding for his fourth consecutive IROC win. And look at Earnhardt as Earnhardt comes down under Al Unser Jr., hooks up with Rusty Wallace. He's, of course, getting a great benefit from Davey Allison just behind him. And Earnhardt comes from back in the center of the field and moves into the lead. You can watch how the different guys team up, Paul. Some of them chose to go with Dale Earnhardt. Some of them chose to go with Rusty Wallace. They're switching back and forth. They really don't care who they team up with as long as they get there. Boy, look whoa, at that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Track. He had that thing totally lost that for a second Rusty there. Wallace. He 
he almost lost it right there. That shows that you can get him sideways and still save him because he was sure sideways for a while. Rusty Wallace with Scott Pruitt just behind him, but from seventh to first for Dale Earnhardt in a single lap. And right behind him, Paul Davey Allison. You see him in the orange car on the right of the screen. Remember that Davey Allison is only driving his third lap ever in IROC competition. He's right up bidding for the lead. The view here from the front of Scott Pruitt's car up to Rusty Wallace. And the question that we will be asking ourselves throughout the day is who will team up with who? Because if you just saw, that's the key to it. And it's a key again, as now Ricky Rudd helps Davey Allison come down and work the low groove alongside Earnhardt, and Earnhardt drops back to third. Rudd, too, is an IROC rookie, having his first race ever in this form of competition. It just shows you when you're an experienced stock car racer, it means you can get right into IROC and perform very well. Yeah, these guys run here every week, like you were just saying, Sam, or not every week, but they test here a lot. They run a lot of races here. They really know what to do for all the aerodynamics, all the drafting, and they go right for it. Scott Pruitt running up on the high groove. Rusty Wallace in there. There is Al Unter Jr. just ahead. Looking ahead, you can see that light blue car of Earnhardt. But the leader of the race as they come across the line continues to be Davey Allison. But now Ricky Rudd starts to work on him. And Allison is out there alone as Ricky Rudd comes to the high side with Earnhardt, Al Unter Jr., and Rusty Wallace behind him. With just an hour to go before the race, Davey Allison seemed to be taking it so casually. He couldn't find his suit, didn't seem to really care. But it's obvious now that he's focused on this, he's ready to go. The IROC rookie Ricky Rudd is now out in front. But that's Dale Earnhardt, a five-time Winston Cup champion right behind him, and receiving a solid push from Al Unser Jr. And those, those two who seem to respect one another greatly have teamed up, at least for the time being, dropping Rudd back to third. Teamwork is critical to victory on the high banks of Daytona. Right now, it's stock car champion Dale Earnhardt out in front of IndyCar driver Al Unser Jr. In Daytona, round number one of the International Race of Champions with Dale Earnhardt. That light blue car out in front, Al Unser Jr. tucked in just behind him. Then Ricky Rudd, then Rusty Wallace, then Scott Pruitt. And we're seeing from time to time, Bobby Unser, a puff of smoke. Looks like tire smoke from the back of several of the cars. How critical are the tires going to be? Well, the tires are always critical. Of course, right now, Paul, the tires are good because they're still cold. But later on in the race, they're going to get hot. And if it's the right rear, of course, the cars are going to get loose in the rear end. And there goes little Al, Al Unser Jr., the IndyCar driver, as he goes door to door with Dale Earnhardt. A and great the, stock car champion. And the problem right there was the little Al tried that on his own, and he didn't get help. Right from that white car, Ricky Rudd didn't help him. That would have got him by. Now look at him. He can't get back in. He's going to shuffle way back. He's caught out there totally alone, and he's not going to get any help out of Davey Allison, who comes up as they go three wide in the corner. Stock car racers at the front of this field right now, led by Dale Earnhardt and Ricky Rudd. There are the two of them. Rusty Wallace in third. You see Davey Jones could have hooked up a little Al and maybe saved both of their positions on the bottom with the train past them on the outside. But it was lacking in experience right there on fast speedways like this. They're running 186.8 miles an hour as Ricky Rudd goes down inside Earnhardt. The top driving IndyCar driver at the moment is Scott Pruitt in the tan car top road racer is just behind him that is Jeff Brabham in that green car who started on the pole now Allison comes inside trying to give Ricky Rudd a little help and Al Unser Jr. closes up behind Allison as once again they are three wide yeah three abreast now little Al knows he's got Davy Allison a lot of experience extremely good driver and look at them they're going back up towards the front and if they stay together a little while they should get there, Paul. This is the deepest into any IROC race that we have seen the entire pack in drafting distance of each other. Sam, I think it shows that some of these aerodynamic things that I talked about earlier are actually working. The idea being that way back in the field that the guys can still draft good. Look how tight they're staying so far. One of the reasons they can race so tight is because of all the aerodynamic testing that goes on over the winter. They have worked a lot on the noses. Jack Aroon has a further report. Another change these Dodge Daytonas have undergone during the winter months is the addition of a very small metal spoiler at the top end of the longer fiberglass spoiler that they've had in the last couple of years. Now what that has done is it's actually increased the downforce towards the rear of the car. Now it's not very high. In fact, it's less than the height of a penny. But what it has done is increased the overall aerodynamic package and made these cars a lot better on the racetrack. 
now on the backside. Allison makes a move. Ricky run behind him. And the band work again. And remember, there's one other thing. When you see the racing as close as it is right now, or the cars bunched up as much as they are, Paul, radiator. They're going to start getting a little bit hotter later on. This will be a difference. Occasionally, we'll have to see the guys come off to the side or back off with the car ahead of them just enough to cool the engines down a little bit. Finishing the 11th lap, there have been seven lead changes that far in the run. And here's another as Ricky Rudd comes to the front of the field and tries to straddle the middle row. Look a little, look a little out, just shift right to the left and take his gamble with a certain guy's over there. Hanging out in the garages before the race, you saw the drivers trying to make deals with each other, informal deals, but trying to get the confidence of other drivers so that they could race with them when the race began. Well, with the confidence growing among the drivers, and this is the first race of IROC 16, positions are changing rapidly. Ricky Rudd is out in front of Dale Earnhardt. IndyCar driver Alan Jr. runs in third. The fight for the lead is this time it is Dale Earnhardt that forges ahead, and he gets a bit of help from Al Unser Jr. Rusty Wallace now works the low groove and begins working on Little Al. And you notice as Dale passed Little Al, he pulled right down in the lower groove, left Little Al out high, and Little Al almost lost it by the guys, Rusty Wallace, right behind him, Paul. The drafting is so important here, and how the guys make the decision. Now, Little Al pulling off the left, going by Dale, and he's hoping that Rusty gets behind him and helps. Seven lead changes the last seven laps. They make it to the line, it'll be eight. The speed of over 185 miles an hour. This is very seriously fast stuff. Do not be thrown off by the proximity with which they race. They're going very fast. 188 miles an hour, Sam. That is really fast to be running in a group that tight. Allen's are junior leads Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace. Ricky Rudd runs in fourth right now. Scott Pruitt, the IndyCar driver, continues to stay in the front of the field. Remember his spectacular finish here. Well, Scott Pruitt, of course, won right in the last stages of last year's race. He made it all the more remarkable because he'd been so badly injured just over a year before in a crash here in Florida when his IndyCar's brakes failed during a test session. His legs from the knees down were really wiped out. When he came back, he reaffirmed that his whole career had possibility. This race last year put Scott Pruitt back in business as a racing driver. The view back from Scott Pruitt's car. And remember, he did it on a high bank track he's not familiar with and a type of racing he's not familiar with. So our hat is off to Scott really good, and he's doing a good job today. Well, Scott Pruitt is a very competitive racing driver. Now, these Dodge Daytonas are drafting very well this season. That's not by accident. Part of the reason they perform so well is that the basic design is so good. But added to that, Dave Marcus and Jim Sauter spend the winter testing these cars and working on aerodynamics. Here's Jack. This year's stable of IROC Dodge Daytona race cars have undergone several major design modifications. Now, one of the more important improvements have taken place in the nose area of the race car. Gone are the sharp, angular lines that we saw on the noses of last year's version. They've been replaced with a sleeker, smoother, much more aerodynamic approach. They've also included a fluted radiator area that comes directly from the Dodge Viper pace car we saw at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Now, what have all these improvements done to the handling characteristics of these cars? Drivers say that last year's models were extremely stable in two and three car drafts. This year, drivers say that as many as seven and eight cars can draft nose to tail and not only be efficient, but be comfortable as well. So the winter work of all the Dodge and IROC engineers pays off in some really great racing. And look at Earnhardt with Rusty Wallace pushing him. And just behind that, of course, Ricky Rudd as Al Hunter Jr. now works down a little bit on the banks. Earnhardt had an indifferent IROC season last year. Of course, he is the defending Winston Cup championship, but his IROC results were not up to snuff was the defending champion. He was unable to uphold that. And I think this year, the team of Dale Earnhardt is dedicated to the idea that he'd like to add a second IROC championship to his list of achievements. Now watch as we go on down. Occasionally, catch a glimpse of the four cars in the back, and you'll get an idea what happens like back in Ari Line like uh, position right there, Paul, how if you don't team up together, how you start losing the draft, how you start breaking away. See the cars in the back there? They're separated. Now, these guys have not been teaming up, so they're slowly falling back. 
Back at the front of the field is Rusty Wallace, again with Ricky Rudd helping, and Al Unser Jr. Rusty Wallace comes back to the lead. Al Unser Jr. slides in ever so carefully just in front of that light blue car of Dale Earnhardt. And then you see uh, Scott Pruitt, who is managing to stay solidly in the fight. And I think we uh, really need to mention that uh, as a rookie to the IROC, Davy Jones is looking very strong as well. Look at Ricky Rudd as he goes by. And the wave says, come on, somebody hook up with me. I need a little help here. Yeah, well, he was getting help. Little Al was going right on by with him. And there goes Dale Earnhardt. They say, hey, man, this is neat. Let's go for it. You know, you say, this is neat. When these guys get out of these cars at the end of this race, everyone is going to be grinning from ear to ear. They love this stuff. Sure, it's tense. Sure, there's a lot at stake. But it is a, a, just a lot of fun to trade positions at 188 miles an hour. There is no race that they run so close, so fast. In the International Race of Champions, the Daytona at IROC, the record number of lead changes was 25 in 40 laps back in 1977. And so far today, we've had 13 lead changes now in just 18 laps. So we mentioned how great last year's race was. Look at this one. We're running now. The Another amazing thing is everybody's still in touch with each other. Well, Sam, I just started to mention the amazing thing is that nobody's been doing any pushing yet. This is the first IROC race that we've seen that they haven't been doing bumper to bumper pushing. Looking from Scott Pruitt's number six, the tan colored car. The field now run. Al Unser Jr., Dale Earnhardt, Rusty Wallace, Scott Pruitt, Davey Allison, Davey Jones, then Jeff Brabham, then Harry Grant Gant. Pete Hallsberg runs in 10th place. Hurley Haywood in 11th. And Ari Leyendijk will be driving for Chip Ganassi in the Indy cars this year. He runs in 12th position. Daytona, the International Race of Champions, Al Unser Jr. leads it. Then Ricky Rudd in that white car. Dale Earnhardt, the powder blue machine. Davey Allison and Davey Jones battled out just behind them. And the field is once again bunched up, all 12 running right together as we're beyond the halfway point now. Those four cars that I mentioned a while ago, they were kind of bumping back because they weren't teaming up. Hey, they learned, Paul. They've heard the stories about IROC. They teamed up and they came right back up into the group again. And in that one shot right there, you saw the entire field. We're back to the front four. For the moment, it's Little Al, but not very long as Earnhardt takes over. I have been watching races for over 35 years, and I don't remember as deep into a race as big a bunch of cars operating right close together in touch with each other. This is fabulous. Well, that gives you an idea, too, not only of the driver's skill, but the tremendous preparation of the IROC crew up in Kenton Falls, New Jersey. The job they've done with these Dodge Daytonas to make them equally matched and very competitive. As Sam Posey pointed out at starting, it's very important for a driver to be part of the IROC. But the race itself, well, for Dale Earnhardt, it's a simple equation. It's a race. I mean, anytime you put these guys together in a race, somebody wants to win. I want to win. Uh, it took me a long time to win a series. And it was two years ago when I first came with the Dodges. But uh, uh, it's, I'm very proud of being the, the winner of the IROC series. And uh, I was worried about not winning one in my race career. So it's a race, and everybody wants to win it. I don't care uh, what they say or think. Uh, and if, engine fires up and that adrenaline goes to pump and everybody wants to win they don't want to run last boy there's a real racer dale earnhardt in the meantime out on the daytona speedway the action continues positions changing constantly as once again a change for the lead as little al with ricky rudd just behind and davy allison right there as well all three come up past earnhardt now by the way the report from the uh corners is that Davy Jones did get up against the wall and brushed it and has been running off the pace ever since so we'll keep an eye on Davy Jones as well but you know these cars have been very forgiving haven't they because there have been a number of near incidents but nothing has gotten away from the drivers we saw that fantastic battle for control by Rusty Wallace early in the race he saved it with ease I think they're more stable than they've ever been there's Davy Jones running off the pace we indicated that he did get against the wall, and you can see he's well, well back from the pack. He was a protege what? of A.J. Foyt in Indy a few years back. Man, with immense promise, really. See what mostly happens to that is, is he bends the fender just a little bit, and he runs the aerodynamics of the car, slows it down. 
The leader now is Ricky Rudd with Earnhardt just behind him. They swap the lead constantly. We've talked in the past about the performance of these cars and drivers. This may be the best one yet. They are all, with the exception of Davy Jones, still running together. They start at 12, 11 or still knows the tail. Ricky Rudd had his most violent accident of his career right here in 1984 in the Bush Clash. End over, end over, and right this part of the track here. Number 11 is Rudd. Number seven, Earnhardt, just behind him. Baby Allison closes in. We're well over halfway, Paul, and the drivers are thinking right now, at least the ones you've seen, like the little Al Ford right there, Ricky Rudd, all of those guys, they're trying to think, what are they going to do for the last lap or the last two laps of the race? Winston Cup drivers in the top three positions. Fourth is IndyCar driver, Al Unser Jr., another IndyCar competitor in fifth place in Scott Pruitt. Yes, and the finishing order of the Winston Cup last year was, of course, Dale Earnhardt, who was second here, and Ricky Rudd, who was first here, was second. So they juxtaposed them flip-flop themselves right now and of course some of that carries over from these drivers from season to season race to race they remember their positions and the great battles while they are confined to an individual race will tend to be ongoing from season to season and year to year you bet this is a question of trying to settle a score would Ricky Rudd like to beat Dale Earnhardt in this one you bet he would so 11 cars in the IROC race together though the last three tend to separate back just a little bit now but Ricky Rudd followed by Earnhardt, followed by Davey Ellison in the front of the field. From the Indy cars, and he's been experimenting, Bobby. Last lap, he was down low, but he is staying in there, running in sixth place right now. The view from Wallace's car, you can see over to Ari Leyendijk in the pink car, and Ari seems to be figuring it out. Well, he is. He's doing a good job, and I watched him one time when he was trying to pass the car in front of him, Paul, and he really should have made the pass, but he got no help from behind him. He had nobody to help him down there by himself that's like being a pioneer you're just not going to make it more interesting to me is what is what is rusty wallace just on to the right of uh uh what, what the screen there in the blue car what is he doing back that far in the pack we're looking from his car right now we thought he was a potential winner of this race he's running mid-pack right now to rusty wallace that's going to be a tire sometimes you get a tire a little bit hotter some of them may have their right rear tire a little hot sam so they'll have to go back try to cool it and i've watched some of them cooling their radiators off too well we keep talking about way back it isn't that far that white car there is ricky rudd in the lead so Rusty Wallace certainly is still in the fight with Earnhardt right behind Rod Allison just behind him, then Al Unser Jr. All you need to do is pick up a little friendship, a little help from someone. If you can work the low groove, a Rusty Wallace could come forward. What he needs now is a little support. So Rusty Wallace tries to work his way up. The Winston Cup champion, the IROC champion, a man who loves adventure. Here's Jack. 36-year-old Rusty Wallace has always harbored soaring ambitions. Whether it's the mastery of a fighter jet or a position on the racetrack, this NASCAR veteran devotes the same intensity and competitive drive. In 1983, Wallace captured three ASA races in their driving title as well. It opened the door to a full-time Winston Cup ride and Rookie of the Year honors in 84. His first Winston Cup win came in 1986 and an IROC invitation in 88. It was a chance for him to display his ability against the world's best, another opportunity for Wallace to showcase his talent. I remember I won the ASA title back in 1983. and said, okay, I won a championship. Thought he'd get me an IROC. I said, no, no, it's not enough yet, you know. So I always wanted to get an IROC. When I finally got in it three or four years ago, uh, I guess because of the finishes I had in 88. So I've been in, I guess, in 88, 89, 90, 91, 92 now right in a row. And it's been a wonderful experience, and I enjoyed it a lot. And I never thought back then I would have been in it. Unceasing ambition pushed Wallace further. In 1989, he won six races, and by the end of the season, he wore the crown of NASCAR Winston Cup champion. Last year, Rusty ventured into the ownership side of racing, joining forces with Roger Penske and Don Miller to field his own team. Despite the added pressures of ownership, the results were good. Two poles and two victories. But perhaps what Rusty Wallace will remember most about last year was his remarkable performance in IROC. He took checkered flags at Talladega, Michigan International Speedway, and then the finale in Watkins Glen, New York. The first driver in IROC history to win three consecutive races on his way to his first IROC championship. To barely beat somebody out of the points is one thing, to win a championship. But, been to, but to win the last three races in a row I thought was a remarkable feat. And I was just real happy with the cars I had and how they were prepared. 
and I'd, I'd made some moves in a racetrack that worked out for me, and, and I got the title, and I came on home with it. Rusty Wallace runs in seventh place right now, so he's got plenty of room to make up if he wants to come forward and race with those at the front of the field. Currently, it's Rudd in front. Pruitt, Pruitt is coming into the pit. Scott in Pruitt the goes car. to the pit road as the yellow comes out. There was a quick move there. It looks like uh, yeah. Pruitt had his... And Hallsford's the car there yeah, seems damaged. to be damaged. So we have finally had an incident. Pruitt's car is on fire. Hallsmer pulled way down to the inside coming through the fourth turn and was looking for position, and it sure looks like he got together with Scott Pruitt. Scott Pruitt's car has stopped there. Scotty is out of the car. And standing a few feet away from it is there some telltale black smoke coming out of there, which... Uh, may tell you that that particular car could be in trouble. Well, that's oil or, or rubber burning, and uh, it isn't a bad fire yet, and they'll get it out pretty quick. Well, Scott Pruitt is safely out of his burning car, and Jack Arute is right there yeah. with him. What happened? I'm not really sure. Started seeing a little smoke, and next thing I knew, the thing was on fire going down a back street, a bunch of flames on the inside, so I just <laughs> tried to get back and get that thing stopped. <coughs> He's got, a, he's got a little bit of a problem, Paul, with his breathing. It filled up real quick. Oh, it just filled up real quick, full of smoke. It just came on all of a sudden and a bunch of flames on the inside. And, um, I just think I'm getting it stopped and getting out. It's good to see you're okay. Thanks. So the field runs under yellow with Ricky Rudd. And remember, the laps under yellow do not count. Ricky Rudd is in front. Dale Earnhardt is second. The situation was contact with Scott Pruitt. Now, look at the cars down in the low groove as we look at this replay. That's Scott Pruitt in the tan car, and he suddenly slows. Here comes Halsmer, and he center punches him, Bobby. Yeah, Scott Pruitt was obviously pulling off the fast part of the racetrack. I suspect he had a problem, was trying to get out of the way. Pete Halsmer's coming up behind. It just happened too quick. From the onboard camera on top of Harry Gant's car. There is Halsmer as he slams into the back end of Scott Pruitt as Pruitt drifts across in the front. Halsmer uh, is a graduate of Purdue University, and of course he is also a Vietnam War veteran. So this is the look from inside Scott Pruitt's car. You'll see what Pruitt does. He signals, and now he starts to move very fast across the track. And you he's see the smoke? He's already got a fire in that car, and he wants yeah, off and the track. Yeah, watch for uh, the moment that he's hit from behind. There, there it is. is right there. So... Scott Pruitt's car, they put the fire out, and now Peter Halsmer is with Jack Arute. Pete, first of all, you all right? Oh, yeah. What happened? Oh, Scott pulled down and was slowing down uh, more than I could handle. The brakes just wouldn't handle it. I couldn't get slowed down. I couldn't really swerve out of the way. Uh, it just happened too quick. I just center punched him. Wasn't much I can do. He didn't even realize that he'd been hit. He said, all of a sudden, all I knew was that, that the car had gone on fire. <laughs> Kind of a tough way. When you got a group of, group, group of cars like that, you really can't foresee some of that stuff. I saw something starting to happen, and I pulled down low to try and give myself some room to move. And uh, he just pulled down low and slowed down. It's kind of a combination I just couldn't handle at that time. But you're okay. I'm fine. So Peter Halsmer and Scott Pruitt are both out of the run. There are 10 cars left. Flag now. Flag now with Ricky Rudd in front as the green comes out. Remember, they've had a chance to cool the engines, to cool the tires, and with eight laps to go, it can now be a sprint to the finish as Ricky Rudd and Earnhardt separate just a little bit from Allison and Al Unser Jr. Rusty Wallace pulls up on the high side to challenge Ari Lyonite. And with the yellow two, the entire field bunched up again. Minus, of course, the cars of Scott Pruitt and Peter Halsmer. Ten on the race course right now. Ricky Rudd has waited for years to be part of this high rock competition. He's always wanted to do it, and suddenly, given the opportunity, you can see he's making the most of it. Remember, there are bonus points, five bonus points, for leading the most lap in a given race, and those bonus points can be critical. Well, thus far, Earnhardt has led 12, and Ricky Rudd is coming around to finish leading 11. So in the closing lap here, that is a close and a critical fight. Boy, with a 40-lap race, that just gives you an idea how competitive it's been, how many guys have been leading the race, because the leader only has 12 leading laps. Stock 
car driver into the Winston Cup in the top three positions. But in fourth, Al Unser Jr., by far the best oval racer of a non-stop car uh, driver. And Rusty Wallace sits back in fifth in the Winston Cup. Curly Haywood in sixth place, the best road racer thus far. I like those guys in the front there. Five cars all stand strong together. Look at the gap between the next and Paul. This is the first time since the beginning of the race that Rusty Wallace has started to look competitive. We hypothesized during the yellow flag. Perhaps Rusty overheated his right rear tire when he battled that slide on the third or fourth lap. And maybe he's recovered thanks to the uh, cool down there and the yellow flag uh, part. Because he's running hard again now. Certainly the caution may have helped Rusty Wallace. The front five run together. The rest of the field separated out just a bit. Wallace has only led one lap here, the 17th lap of the run. But he is certainly up in striking position now with just six laps to go. This is a hard track on tires. You can just notice as we watch the racing how far the corners last. You're in the turns an awful long time. Both times, and even the front straightaway is a turn. So the tires don't get much cooling until they have this yellow flag. 355 cubic inch Dodge engines developing about 490 horsepower at 6,800 RPM. They really wind up on the long straightaway on the back side of the Triolo right here. 188 miles an hour and racing at those speeds. Now look at the other crew in the back or the cap is starting to close up now. The guys have to team up and sometimes the rookies, the guys that don't have a lot of experience, don't understand that. As they work off at the second turn. Harry Gant. Four and a half laps to go, and Harry Gant suddenly getting racy on the low side. Down low in the red car. The oldest man in the race, Harry Gant, 52 years old, starting to make his bid, and you see now what it looks like from his position. This is his roof cam. Welcome back to the IROC, Harry Gant. As now he tries to close in and get a piece of the vacuum coming off of the back of that car sitting just in front of him, which is, of course, Al Unser. And boy, at this point, you can just kiss goodbye to all the various road racers and IndyCar racers except Al Unser Jr. The top man that looks like the winner of this race is going to be a NASCAR driver. Harry Gant now runs up in fifth place and now he's getting real serious. Ari Leyendyke was helping him out, still is to a degree, though I'm sure Harry would really like Ari to come right up behind him. And of course, Ari, being from the IndyCars, is not accustomed to that truly close pursuit that the Winston Cup drivers are so perfect at. No, but he's a fast learner. We watched him at Indianapolis. We watched him at a lot of the high-speed tracks. The guy learns in a hurry. Oh, yeah, I'd say so. Up in the <laughs> right now. I think he learned. Here goes Look at Gant. this. Harry Gant now moves up. He's alongside second place, and he's got his sights set on Ricky Rudd, the leader. Remember, it was Harry Gant who reeled off that unbelievable string of victories last September. He is now looking hot again. Harry Gant. You know, he's doing a lot of this without an awful lot of help. That means his engine's really putting out the power right now. Just he's not getting a ton of help at all. Whoa! One car down low, and that's yeah. Ari Leyendijk. Has he lost it, but is he going to save it? Yes. Oh, you bet he is. Well, Ari Leyendijk, boy, that had to tighten him up. He did a day's work right there, I'll guarantee you. That, that was Gant's partner, though, and you wonder, it looked like he and Gant may. You'll we'll have to look and see. That's going to cost Gant. He was really depending on that help. He took the starch out of Gant, who incidentally won the IROC championship back in 1975. You see him running fifth there right now. Harry Gant drops back to fifth place as Ricky Rudd still leads Earnhardt across the line now with just two laps to go. Gant, the 85 champion of IROC. I'm sorry, not 75. He's old, not that old. You see him very competitive here right now. Well, he's doing it down there by himself, Sam. He's just making a fool out of aerodynamics and drafting. <laughs> this isn't supposed to work. Uh, but it appears that when you take that tight line, and Earnhardt experimented with that earlier, you can make it work. A lap and a half to go. Harry Gant now drops in the fifth position and tries to pick up some of the benefit of the draft. Ricky Rudd will see the white flag as he comes around. But every time he looks up in his mirror, he knows he's got Dale Earnhardt sitting right there in what may be the most enviable position on the course. Boy, you can bet the gears are churning away. One lap to go in Dale Earnhardt's brain right now. What is he going to do about Ricky Rudd? Now's the time, Paul. They have to make their decisions. All their thinking has come to an end. They have to make their move now if they're going to do it. The final two.
two and a half miles, now down to two miles. Harry Gant looks for any help that he can get. No one seems ready to do so. Now Earnhardt looks to the inside of Ricky Rudd onto the back stretch. Allison sits back and watches both of them as they battle for the lead. Gant sits back here in fourth place. They move into the final two corners, back into the high bank. Look at the maneuver around as Earnhardt tries to keep Allison in check and Gant comes down inside Allison to the inside. Ricky Rudd is on the high side. Gant continues to move down the inside. They're nose to nose as they head for the dry oval of the checkered flag. It's Gant and Ricky Rudd and Earnhardt moving down to the inside as they're three abreast coming across the line and Earnhardt takes it. Earnhardt then Gant then Ricky Rudd at the line as they hit the line three abreast. The Winston Cup drivers first, second, and third and not separated by more than a foot and a half. I can't tell you who got second. I can tell you who got first, and I sure could pick second out of that. That's the closest one I've ever seen. That was a work of art by Dale Earnhardt. He had to put together three or four coalitions in that last lap to pull off what he does. What a brilliant victory for Dale Earnhardt. So round number one of the International Race of Champions 16th running is now complete, and the man in the light blue car, Dale Earnhardt, has taken the win. And he waves to the fans. We'll be back to talk with him in a moment. Out of his Dodge and then up onto the windowsill to acknowledge the applause of the IROC fans here, and Jack Arood is right there. Well, Dale Earnhardt, absolutely one of the most fantastic finishes ever in Dodge IROC competition. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, you know, uh, Jay and all the guys did a great job with these cars. I ragged Jay pretty hard for the race about the car being perfect, being just like I wanted to be. You know, it was a good race. It was exciting. I think one of the most exciting IROC races I've ever been in. And, I'd like to thank True Value and all the folks who really supported it and put this thing on it. It's a great day for us. Now take us through the last couple of elements of that final lap. You really had to use some maneuvering to get a shot at that front position. Well, I, I thought I could draft by Ricky, but everybody got to racing back there. Gant got to coming up there. When we come through three and four, I didn't know where I was going to be. I knew I was shut out on the front and I couldn't draft by. I was just hoping when we come off and I seen I could get to the bottom. There wasn't any cars there, so I kept moving, and I didn't feel them, and we got right on by again on the inside. No question about it. He is pumped about that victory. And for the first time ever in the IROC, well, they've called it a dead heat for second place as we take a look at the final official results. And what does that do to the points? Well, of course, Dale Earnhardt takes the lead. Now, the difference between Ricky Rudd and Harry Gant is because Rudd got five bonus points for leading laps during the run itself. They'll start in the inverse order of the points when they go to the next race at Talladega Super Speedway. But take a look again at this fantastic finish. I'm Paul Page for Bobby Unser, Sam Posey, and Jack Aroot. We'll see you at Talladega. <laughs>